So what goes into a work paper? I'm going to use the Cloud9 case study by Campbell and White um, that we use at UTS to explain what goes into a work paper and the reasons that we have those different components. So let's start with, and I'll go to the first assignment. Assignment 1. All right. So you'll notice that a work paper has a couple of different common components, regardless of where you're auditing, what country, what client. The first is always going to be a work paper reference at the top of the page. That work paper reference is our numbering system for work papers. And in this particular book, A1 stands for Assignment 1, but you might have uh, A1 replaced by a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5. And that's going to represent perhaps an account class or a part of the accounts. The next section is the prepared by. And the prepared by is really, really important because it tells us who prepared the work paper. This is important from a legal perspective because if a court case does come up, the court will need to know who prepared the work paper and then the date that they did that work. So what else do you see in a work paper? We see the name of the company so that we know that we're doing the right client work, the financial year, and then the heading that tells us what part of the audit we're actually doing. So for assignment one in cloud nine, we're actually identifying significant risks. In assignment two, we do other tasks. So the general parts of a work paper that are the same no matter what you're doing, the work paper reference, who prepared it, when they prepared it, the company, the date, uh, or the end of the financial year and the actual part of the audit. Later on we'll look at how to complete actual work papers but this is just an outline of what goes into a basic work paper and these are all outlined in the auditing standards on audit documentation.